And if there's one thing that I'm really bad with, it's to kind of schedule myself and do the things that I need to do. Like, I tend to schedule way too many things, I tend to get involved with way too many things, and that often is a problem. But I did want to do a video today on a topic that I didn't get involved in, and that is Bitcoin. A lot of people ask about Bitcoin and whether they should invest or trade or it's like the popular thing these days. I'll explain today in three parts why I didn't jump into Bitcoin and why I still believe that it's not the place for me to be in. I think it's very easy first of all to get involved into too many things and to realize after that you have too many things going on and then you have to stop, you have to get away from some things and that is really not the way to go. Stating which you feel bad, you feel like you don't get anything done and you're always average in all these areas. The very first thing that we need to talk about is the power of refocusing. Really focusing on one thing and doing that thing as best as you can do it. All right, you can do 10 things to like the first degree, like this right here, and that's how well you'll do all 10 things. Or you can do one thing to the 10th degree right there, and look how much better you do that. You see, that's pretty much the reason why I never went to different markets, because I believe in the power of being in one market understanding how the market works, understanding also how the things move, and really putting all your effort into one basket. And that doesn't mean that the only thing I do is trading all day and don't do anything. It's, it's not the point. You can go different ways. But the more you go into different things, the more average or the more bad you become at that one thing. Over the years, I've also kind of developed this doubt. Whenever people jump into one thing, and that becomes like the biggest thing that everybody jumps into, I learned to not jump because oftentimes people who jump don't really know what they're doing and when it's getting the norm and when everybody talks about something it's usually time to get out. There's this quote by Earl Nightingale that says look at what the majority of people are doing and do the exact opposite and you'll probably never go wrong for as long as you live. Pretty powerful isn't it? And that kind of goes in line with your personality as well. Some people like to jump with the crowd and you see these people in trading who like to trade pullbacks and trade with the trend. Or there's these people who try to go against the majority, who might prefer to trade reversals. That's the perfect alignment of personality with the way you trade, with your trading style. So that's pretty much the second reason why I didn't jump into Bitcoin at the beginning and why I still want to do it, because it's still too popular. Now the very last reason, and this has to do with this. The charts. I have no clue how good I can be at trading in Bitcoin and how good my strategy and trading style is going to work on Bitcoin. There's no way to know. And even if you were to backtest, like pick the daily chart or whatever time frame you want to look at, you're going to have data around mid-2011, depending on the broker you use and the chart you look at. But that's not a lot of time if you want to backtest something on a higher time frame. And the cycles in Bitcoin are not always the same. Like they really vary. Trading something when Bitcoin was at $500, and ranging. It's not the same thing as trading when it's like at 5,000 and really bouncing strong. That's a big difference. And we always say you need to kind of adapt to the market and trade based on what the market is doing right now. But you don't really know how to trade on Bitcoin because all the markets have been different. And I understand people who jump to Bitcoin, like they might take a little bit more risk. They might not know exactly what they're doing because they didn't test it on Bitcoin in the past. So you accept that. But for me, it's not the way I would go about it. And that's probably based on my personality, probably based on what I prefer, and also probably based on people I surround myself with, which don't always trade Bitcoin. Although some do, which is interesting. So those are pretty much the three main reasons why I don't trade Bitcoin and why it's not really an interest for me. If it's an interest for you, I'm pretty sure there's people who can help you with that path and help you understand Bitcoin and trade Bitcoin. But if you do it only because everybody else is doing it and only because it's the trendy topic right now, and the majority of people are jumping into that today and yesterday in these past few weeks. Ask yourself whether that's a valid move and whether it's going to be something logical. Not only emotional because you feel like you miss out on something. I think that's a big part to it. And I do need to warn you that trading Bitcoin might require more capital. And I didn't check exactly the uh, like how it works and everything, if you have leverage or stuff. But buying something at $5,000 it's not the same thing as buying a currency at $1. And I understand that currency, yeah, like you buy a loss and everything, and big units, but still, like at $5,000, you probably need more capital to trade that Bitcoin. And the question is, can you handle the swings that there is every single day? If you're someone like me, 
need to be a little bit more cautious and you have trouble seeing the move on the chart. Maybe it's not the best case to jump into Bitcoin. I hope this is useful. I hope it explains the question. If you have any questions, any thought, and if you want me to bring people to Bitcoin on the podcast and on this channel, I'll do it. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.